everybody, welcome to another week of Pilates Plus Physio. Uh, we're going to do some things in sitting to start off with, so if you want to pause the video and go and grab yourself a dining room chair or a stool, please do. You need your yoga mat and possibly your yoga brick and maybe a small pillow for your head if you normally have that. So, starting off, sitting right up tall, maybe put your hands underneath your bottom and see if you can feel your bottom bones and then just think about where your bottom bones are actually pointing are they pointing down to the floor are they pointing behind you or have you rocked off them and they're pointing forwards so just experiment a little bit so just think of sitting tall think of those bottom bones like two arrows get them pointing down to the floor and then if you tip forwards, get them pointing backwards. And then if you let yourself slump, they start to point forwards. So just roll around a little bit on them. And just come so that your bottom bones are pointing straight down towards the ground. So keep them pointing down. Release your fingers. Pop your hands onto your thighs. Sit tall. Slide one hand down your thigh, draw the other one back, and then slide the other one down. So keep looking ahead. So maybe fix your eyes on something in front of you, a clock or a spot on the wall or a picture. And just keep going, nice and gentle. Slide one arm down, slide the other one down. So the shoulder girdle is really turning. You're getting some nice rotation between your upper back and neck. And just keep going with that. Lovely one for loosening up your upper back area. So good one if you're doing a lot in sitting, if you're painting, if you're at a computer a lot of the time. That's good. Okay. So just come back into the middle and now make a fist. Put it right in the middle of your sternum, in the middle of your breastbone. Think of one of those great big searchlights shining straight out from your fist. Okay. And we're just going to take the searchlight over to the side. So swing it right round the room as far as you can. And then it bring it all the way back round the other way. And going all the way back again. And going all the way round. Come back into the middle. Now take that light right down towards the floor. So you're sort of focusing on your upper back moving rather than the lower back. Down to the floor. Take it along the floor. Up towards the sky. And back down. Maybe take it round to the side again. Take it down the corner wherever you've got to. Along the floor. Back up the other corner. And then maybe take it in a diagonal top corner of the room, down to the diagonal bottom corner. Up that wall, down to the bottom corner again. And then just sort of freely experiment, maybe just going where you really feel stiff, where you feel those little joints in your upper back just don't want to go. So just taking that searchlight, take it over to the side, it could go up along and coming back down again just really feeling that movement through your upper back that's great okay come back into the middle so that's hopefully loosened off your upper back area now just take your attention down to your feet a little bit so just think about one foot put it flat down on the mat either pop your hands over your knee or just hold around the top of your shin and you're just gently going to take the pressure from the outside of your foot across to the inside back onto the outside so it's really subtle your foot is staying in contact with the floor so you're just feeling the floor with the bottom of your foot or if you had your foot on quite a thick yoga mat you're almost just gently squashing the mat on the inside and then squashing the mat on the outside. So your knee itself isn't really moving. You're getting a nice rotation of your shin bone underneath the knee, which is a natural movement that happens when you're walking. 
And the more you can feel the bottom of your foot on the floor, the better your balance will be. So this is a great one to do if your balance isn't quite as good as it should be. Okay, swap to the other leg. So holding the knee or around the top of the shin, just gently take the pressure onto the outside of your foot and across onto the inside. Often people work too hard with this. It's not a, it's a control sort of exercise rather than a muscle strengthening exercise. Just gentle pressure on the outside, roll across onto the inside. So you could think of going from your big toe joint across to your little toe joint. Big toe joint across to the little, or take it back to the heel. You're going from the outside of the heel across to the inside. Outside of the heel across to the inside. Okay, and then just maybe tap, tap the toes on the ground, lift the heels up, stamp the heels, toes off on one foot, heel off on the other foot. We're just waking up the feet a little bit. Lovely, okay. Stand back up again. And just get rid of the stool. So let's do a little bit of balancing now that we've woken up the bottom of the feet. So maybe press right up towards the sky with one hand, press down with the other, bring a knee up in front. And just stand there. And pop the leg down, switch legs. So again, you're really just feeling the bottom of that foot on the floor. Don't worry if you're a little bit wobbly. Keep pressing right up, pressing down. And switch legs again. Nice and smooth. And switch again. That's great. Bring the leg down, switch arms. So press up with one. Think of the big car spring underneath your hand. You're pushing that right down towards the floor. So you're getting a nice little bit of tissue tightness across, across the middle diagonally. Float one knee up in front, hold it there. And switch legs. So think of pressing your foot down into the ground. That just gets the muscle around the hip engaging a little bit more. And switch again. So foot onto the floor. Think of pushing that foot into the ground. Float the knee up. Good, good. And one more. That's good. Okay, pop your feet down, bring the arms down. A little bit of just standing on one leg. So fold the knee up. Maybe turn your head one way. Turn your head the other way. Ooh. Come back to the middle. Switch legs. Feel your foot on the floor. Knee up in front. That's what happens when you start thinking about what you're going to do next. Turn your head one way. Turn your head the other way. Back to the middle. Swap feet again. Fold the knee up. How about bringing both arms up? Twist your upper body one way and back and the other way. This is quite tricky. And back. Bring the arms down. Swap feet. So fold the knee up. Arms up, bend the elbows, twist one way, and come back, and twist round the other way, and back, lovely, bring the arms down, both feet down, just do a few roll downs, so chin on your chest, draw the tummy in, roll down as if you were going to touch your toes, so if your back's sore, you could walk your hands down your 
down your legs, dangle when you're down there, tummy in hard, and furl all the way back up. And again, chin on your chest, scoop in the lower tummy, roll down. So arms nice and soft, head nice and floppy, right down. You could give the arms a shake, sort of dangle your head when you're there, draw in again, and fold back up. And let's do one more of those. Chin to your chest. Think of the weight of your head drawing you down towards the floor. Lovely, lovely. And come all the way back up. And then come down so that you're lying on the mat, just in the relaxation position. So you're lying on your back, knees bent, Head down on the floor. Let's get onto the mat in a minute. So, maybe just take your feet to the edges of the mat and then let your knees flop in together. Let the shoulders drop back. Gentle breathing down into the tummy. Just think of letting your back sort of melt down into the floor. Imagine you're an ice cream on a hot pavement. You're just melting down into the pavement there. Just gentle breathing. And then maybe just take one really, really big breath in, as big as you can. Really fill the lungs right up and then a long, long breath out. Really emptying the lungs of all the air right down to the bottom. And then just coming back to the normal breathing. And then you could sort of heel toe the feet back in so the legs are parallel. Take both arms to the ceiling, back of your shoulders on the mat, one arm back over the top of your head. And draw it back up and take the other arm back. So you're just lengthening and reaching through the fingers. Alternate arms. See if you can feel anything going on through the lower tummy as you do that. You want that tummy just gently dropping away from the waistband of your trousers. As long as the waistband isn't sort of up around your ribs. It's lower tummy. Okay, let's add a leg. So same arm and leg. Right arm going back, right leg sliding down the mat. Left arm and left leg. So toes up towards you. Think of really pressing out through the bottom of your foot. You had two little torch beams shining from your hip bones up onto the ceiling. They're staying completely still. So the pelvis is staying still. The pelvis doesn't rock back and forwards. Alternate arms and legs. Right and right, left and left. And then maybe let's do diagonal arm and leg. So right arm and left leg. Left arm and right leg. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Pop the arms down. Feet fairly close to your bottom. Feel the bottom of your feet on the mat. We're going to do a spine curl. So press into your feet. Peel your back up away from the floor. Nice and smooth. And then roll back down again. One bone at a time. And going again. Pressing into your feet. So keep the toes on the ground. Curl your bottom up. Think of your back like that nice string of beads. As you come up, you're taking one bead at a time off the floor. As you go down, one beam at a time, one bead at a time, beam, one bead at a time, going back onto the mat. Okay, maybe come up again. Keep the pelvis level, take a knee out to the side and draw it back in and take the other one out and back in and roll all the way down. And again, curl up. So coming up, straight line, knees, hips, ribs, pelvis level, one knee out to the side. 
So that inner thigh muscle has to let go. You're leaving the other leg behind. So one leg is staying still. The other one is dropping out. Maybe go again. Knee out to the side and come back in. And the other side. And back in and roll down. And this time, curl your bottom up. How about taking both arms right back over the top of your head? Leave the arms there. Roll your bottom back down. It's much harder now to get that feeling of one bone at a time. So if that doesn't happen, just imagine it, it happening. When you're all the way down, pull the arms back over. Another few of those. Bottom up. Float the arms back. Roll down, arms down, one more, curl up, make sure you get your bottom right back down to the mat before you let the arms come back, so you're really getting that big muscle through the shoulders having to lengthen and let go and lengthen and let go as you come down. Okay, bring the arms all the way down, pop your hands underneath your head, elbows right back and wide. We're going to do a little roll up, curl up, tuck in the chin, lift your head and shoulders to look down over the top of the knees and release back down. And again, tuck in the chin, engage your pelvic floor muscles, curl up, so sliding your ribs down the front. Just using your hands to take a little bit of the weight of your head, so you're not pulling on your head and neck, curl up. This time maybe just come down a couple of inches and come back up and maybe go down sort of halfway and come back up and go down three quarters and back up keep the elbows back and wide and then all the way down to the mat and again chin tucking in curl up release a little bit and back up Release a little bit further and back up. Release a little bit more and back up and right down. And again, chin tucking in, curling up. Release a little and back up. Release a little and back up. A little bit more and back up. And all the way down. Fantastic. Just let the head release. Gently roll your head from one side to the other. Let the neck release. Good. Maybe either hold behind the thigh, tuck in the chin and gently roll up. Or turn onto your side and come up. So tuck in the chin, gently roll up. Come over onto tabletop position or all fours. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. Press the floor away from you. Your head is in line with the rest of your back. Chin gently tucked in. A little bit of a hollow in your lower back. Maybe just let your tummy sag down towards the floor and then just gently draw it up. Your back doesn't move. Keep that feeling of pressing out through the hands. Float one arm up in front. Just hold that there. And come down and float the other one up and come down and slide one leg back so think of sliding the leg back and then float it up you could put your yoga brick on your bottom just make sure that stays balanced there or a book and draw that leg back in and on the other side so you're pressing back and then floating up. Chin staying tucked in. Think of the back of your neck as a sort of continuation of the rest of the spine. Diagonal arm and leg. So don't worry how high the arm is going. Think of a balloon or something tied to your thumb. Just taking you a little way forward and up. Hold it there. And down. And on the other side, so press the floor away from you, chin tucked in, diagonal arm and leg. And 
coming down, switch again. So think of the leg going back rather than up. Hold there. And going one more. That's good. Both hands on the mat, knees apart, sort of about almost to the edges of the mat, big toes together. Let your bottom go right back to your heels. So bottom all the way back. Stretch the arms right out in front. Let your head come down towards the floor, if it will. So you're getting a nice stretch through the shoulders. Nice sort of bending stretch through the hips, if you like. They're bending almost as much as they possibly can. Back of the ribs sticking up towards the ceiling. Think of breathing into that area. That's good. Okay. Come back up onto hands and knees. Chin tucked in, press the floor away from you. Maybe tuck the toes underneath. You can just do that if you want. So you're just pressing the toes back if you like. Or tuck the toes underneath, press the floor away from you with your hands. Lift the knees, just an inch or two. Hover there. And pop them down. Go gently as you go down. You don't want to be banging your knees down onto the mat. Good one for the arms, you get lots of nice weight going through those arm bones. So again, press into the hands, shoulders away from your ears, hover the knees, tummy staying drawn in. Good. Knees down, put the feet down flat, bottom straight back again this time maybe. Creep your fingers over to the right side of the mat. Breathe into the left side of the ribs. And then creep your fingers to the left side of the mat. Let your bottom sink right back to your heels if it will. Breathe into the right side of the ribs. Lovely. Hands back into the middle. Come back over into sitting. Uh, those who can, arms in front, tuck in the chin, roll really slowly back down. Good. Back down onto the mat. Put your left ankle onto the right knee. Let the knee flop out. If you can, grab behind the right thigh. So you could lift your head up in order to grab and then get your head back down. Or you could pop your belt or your stretchy uh, yoga band through there. So just holding on there. Make sure the head is released. Back of the buttock stretch on the left leg. Still got that little bit of a hollow through your lower back. So you're keeping your back in what neutral position. So your back isn't now flattened into the floor. Okay. And then you could just take your right foot up towards the ceiling as well. You could pull the toes up. More of a hamstring stretch again. Watch the head, because if your nervous system is a little bit tight, the temptation is to let the head tip back as you stretch out through the bottom of the hamstrings. Good, okay, bring the leg down, pop the right foot back onto the mat, uncross the legs, right ankle onto your left knee. Let that right knee flop out. You could just stick with that, or if you can, hold behind your left thigh, so reach forward and grab that. You often find one side is quite a bit stiffer and tighter than the other side, so 
I'm a, quite a bit stiffer in my right hip than I am on my left. So this is, should be stretching the back of your right buttocks. If you're not getting much stretch, maybe just gently move your left thigh a little bit one way or a little bit the other. See if you can just find that sort of bite point where you get that real stretch in the buttock. And then you can almost think of taking your breath down into that tight area, if you don't think that's completely nutty. Just trying to breathe into that tight muscle and telling it it can let go a little bit. And then you could straighten out your left knee, foot up towards the roof, you could pull the toes up towards you, get a bit more stretch in the calf if it's burny or pins and needlesy. Let go. Lovely. Let that release. Bend the knee. Both feet back down onto the mat. Maybe slide both legs right down flat. If your back doesn't like it, keep them bent. Pull the toes up towards you. And then let them release. Maybe take both arms right back over the top of your head, all the way back. Let the legs flop out. Breathing gently down into the tummy. And then bring the arms all the way down beside you. Hands sort of facing the ceiling, let the legs just flop. Maybe shut your eyes if you can. Breathe down with the diaphragm. So gentle breath in and breathe out. Just going to stay here for a few moments. either stay down on the mat and just do a little bit more of the breathing um, or you could start to just gently get yourself up again slowly. Thank you so much for joining me again and see you again soon. Thank you, bye bye.